Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I hope you're doing well. Um, hope summer's going well, unless you live in Australia, then happy winter. But um, I recently got my wisdom teeth removed. And so while I was recovering, I designed a compressed air engine on Fusion 360. And unfortunately to 3D print it, it's gonna take days. So I'm throwing this video out to, so you can see the engine. And then once it's all printed, I'll make a video about like assembling it and all that. Here is kind of the first model for the engine. I'm just getting the piston and cylinder laid out. Um, you can see it's all pretty simple shapes. I think pretty soon here it'll oscillate. You can see it moving back and forth. This kind of indicates how the piston will travel. And then the stick coming down, connecting to the cylinder, that will transfer the up and down motion to rotary motion. And you can see here how it's connected. I kind of switched the layout right here. You can see I have one flywheel, um, but I did switch it to two later on. You'll see that. Here's the piston itself. You can see the two gaps for the two flywheels, um, and they will also work to counterbalance the piston and crankshaft. Um, you can see the crankshaft here. We're getting a little more finalized in the design. I figured out a way to connect the piston and the, drive and the crankshaft, the drive shaft the thing coming out of the bottom right now. And then pretty soon you'll see the flywheels here. You can see there's two of them now. And then I have yet to balance them. So right now they're discs, but later on I cut out the side of them so they're more uh, suitable to balance the piston and all that. Right here is a cross section. You can see how the piston has to make room for the flywheels. Um, but yeah, Fusion 360, it's really cool. You can do these cross-section. If you're looking into 3D printing and all that, I really suggest trying to download the hobby version for Fusion 360. It's very, very helpful. You can do a lot of things. The two openings at the top are how the air gets in and out of the piston cylinder area. I did change these later on, but the basic shape remained the same. Here you can see how the air gets in and out. The valves are connected to a cam system at the bottom of the engine, and then they move the valves up and down to allow air in and out. And then right here, you can see a gear reduction. This increases the torque and decreases the speed, but it also allows me to move the clutch assembly over a little bit to make the engine more compact. Now, you might be asking, but classic Steve, Instead of a compressed air engine, why don't you just use an electric motor and lithium-ion batteries? Great question. The reason is a couple. First of all, safety. Air, it's pretty safe. Look, <gasps> it's not flammable. However, lithium-ion batteries aren't the safest. Additionally, Lithium-ion batteries aren't the best for the environment when they are mined. Very important, not when they store energy, but when they're mined. Of course, the energy that's put into the lithium-ion batteries can come from like coal plants and all that, which isn't good for the environment. But I'm talking about actually getting the materials is bad for the environment. And so air, it doesn't need lithium-ion batteries or rare materials. It literally needs just any material to make a engine and any material to use or to store air, which can be 3D printed for the engine. And then, you know, the tank could be like steel, which, you know, it's still, getting steel isn't the best for the environment, but it's not gonna be a perfect solution. And right here, we have more of a complete model. You can see it's really starting to look like an engine now. You can hopefully see the valves on the side. Uh, they're moved up and down by the cams. And then also you can see the clutch here and it supports. The clutch is very, very simple. It's like a mechanical clutch, not a traditional clutch and basically you move the large gear in and out and that just allows the engine to be disengaged from like a drive shaft or something like that. And then right here, I tried to give an assembly view of the entire engine. This is kind of the final version I ended up with. Um, it was a little tricky to figure out ways to assemble it, um, but I think I found some ways, hopefully it'll work out. We'll see, this is my first major project 3D printing, but uh, I think it turned out pretty well. You can let me know in the comments if you have any suggestions or recommendations or anything like that. 
Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed some of this. Uh, I just want to give a huge shout out to all the fathers and grandpas and uncles out there. Happy Father's Day. Uh, just have a great one.